Great, so picking up where we left off here, uh, the resolution, which we see here, occurs when the client, uh, after the climax, showing the implication of the climactic events. In other words, oh, they get together, they get married, or she lives forever, uh, the rest of her life without him. But, you know, fortunately, she was super wealthy and he was a real inspiration and she learned to fly a plane and fell in love with somebody else. And while he was rotting at the bottom of the sea, she lived a very happy and fulfilled life. Whatever it is, uh, there it is, you know, the resolution. Now, the three archetypes of dramatic conflict, this stuff goes back to uh, Aristotle and the Greeks. Um, we're going to kind of give it a more contemporary American cinema spin here. Man versus man. This is a personal conflict. These archetypes of dramatic conflict are important because every time you're creating a scene or seeing a scene, uh, criticizing a scene, you want to have a very clear sense of what is at stake. What is what is the, not only the arts plot, what are the story values at stake, but what kind of conflict is this, okay? And there are three archetypes, three primary different kind, primarily uh, different kinds of, of conflict. Um, man versus man, this is just man, woman, person versus person. This is what uh, McKee calls personal conflict. It's important in the sense that it is not these are not just anonymous people in our watching of the movie. These are people we know. These are, This is a personal person versus another personal person. This is not just random bad guy versus a uh, random uh, cop, whatever. That that That's a little bit different, okay? Um, and it is a, a complicated thing in the sense that... Uh, if we were looking at a film and we saw conflict that was taking place between two humans, but they are humans that we don't know as particular characters. Um, we only know them as uh, someone who we've seen break into a gas station and a police officer, and one is chasing the other. Um, is that is that personal conflict? Is that man versus man? Well, yes, it is man versus man in essence because we could later find out more and understand more about that conflict and it would be personal conflict. But it could also be considered uh, man versus environment in the sense that if later we knew more about the cop and that became a fleshed out, that person became a fleshed out character. She becomes fleshed out for us. We know she works in this very high crime area. Then that bad person who is robbing the gas station could just be kind of part of the environment in a way, in a weird way, because that person doesn't end up being fleshed out for us. That is just a part of uh, our cop that we later know as a very specific person, character, that's just part of the general crime-ridden environment that she has to contend with. Okay, this is not to dehuman any wise, this is just try to understand what, what we're trying to expect out of these kinds of narratives, all right, and what the audience expects. So that's pretty complicated, but I think as you begin to think about it, it it'll make more and more sense to you. Man versus man, personal conflict, ostensibly is conflict between two individuals within a story that are known to us as characters, okay? Man versus environment, again, don't get hung up on the man as a gender uh, title. This is a, 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 a arcane way of saying it, but this is it, person versus the environment is more a struggle that is the person protagonist or antagonist that we're watching versus factors larger than themselves 
that are in that are in the world. Now that that, that could be environment like uh, tornado, hurricane, whatever, or it could be environment like uh, space. Okay, or it could be environment like the government, or uh, crime-ridden New York. Okay, it. It is environment in that it is made up of multitudinous elements, both human and natural, that constitute a source of antagonism that is not between them and another person whose personality we understand or have some insight into. Okay? Uh, man versus himself. This is internal conflict. Uh, this is... Uh, a person who is loaded with self-doubt, a person who doesn't feel like they can love again, a person that uh, is uh, overcoming uh, a uh, maybe a psychological uh, trauma. All right, uh, the the a entire uh, plays are usually around. Uh, Internal conflict, because internal conflict in some ways is very easy to realize on stage. It's It doesn't always uh, involve lots of expensive uh, and lavish sets. So it is something that uh, we can see. We can hear a person talk to another person about what's going on inside them, inside their mind, inside their heart, and what kind of conflict that is. Uh, any given plot, an arch plot, uh, we have a, car, a, a character in conflict with uh, on multiple levels. They could be on, involved in personal conflict, what we call external or man versus environment, or internal man versus himself. Ultimately, if we think of these as different circles of conflict, and you can see this uh, elaborated in the uh, farm uh, link farm, you will see that in some ways it good cl a classic film at the climax you will see the protagonist in fact in conflict on all of these levels at the same time uh, they have something going on inside them which is tearing them apart they have personal conflict and then they are set in this environment which is also somehow working uh, against them okay and 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 ultimately the story values at that climax have rotated in such a way that we are at the bottom of where they are with their personal conflict. They are at the most uh, so moment of self-doubt and the, you know, tornado is like bearing down on them. Okay. Uh, so story values, I've talked about them a lot. There's a slightly better definition of it here. They, uh, they are, uh, according to Robert McKee and I would agree with this, they embody things that are bigger than even our own personal cultural values. Um, we might say an American cultural value is something, uh, a value of self-reliance or uh, the value of um, independent thinking. I mean, you can argue whether that's true or not, but let's say those are two cultural values. They may not be cultural values of someone that lives in another country or from another culture. M movies tend to be bigger than that. Uh, lots of times the story values are things that are human values. Uh, love versus hate. There, there are very few bodies of literature or religious literature that extol hate over love. Okay? Uh, that or extol slavery, the state of slavery over the state of freedom, or the state of lying over the state of telling the truth, okay? Or the state of being a coward over the state of uh, being courageous, right? These are values that are held in all cultures, uh, every body of literature, and almost every religious uh, uh, text, okay? So it makes movies and the stories that are told in movies uh, really have a resonance 
a global resonance. It's one of the reasons that that the movie industry is as powerful as it is, is in terms of a tool of of um, a cultural tool, if you want to think of it, or, or a cultural uh, means of communication. Uh, so that's something to think about. Okay. Uh, so as you look at the rest of this document, uh, you'll see the terms that we've gone over at the bottom, etc. I've thrown a lot at you. I want to take your time with it. We're going to continue to discuss as we go along. Appreciate your patience as ever. And uh, hope this was a benefit to you.